Hi, today we would like to show how you can choose, prepare, and even optimize parts for the additive manufacturing process right here in Fusion 360. The part we want to look at today is this simple bracket that I have designed earlier on right here in Fusion 360. In order to prepare our print, we must leave the design workspace. All 3D printing related capabilities can be found in the manufacturing workspace. This also serves as a hub for all manufacturing processes. The first step is always the creation of a new setup. In here, we would always select the manufacturing type or the machine first. If we go for our Ultimaker 3 printer, all remaining settings will be applied to additive manufacturing characteristics. After selecting our part, it will be automatically placed in the center of the build envelope. In addition to that, we still have a variety of tools that help us change the orientation and the placement of our parts. We can easily use the gizmo to rotate and place the part. Parts that are colored in red collide either with other parts or are outside of our build platform. In this case, Automatically placing the part on the platform and minimizing the build height brings us back to our starting point. So far, we have mostly ignored a very important part of the setup, which are the print settings. These can be seen here on the left. We have currently selected an ABS material with a thickness of 175 millimeters and a nozzle diameter of 0.4 millimeters. The Fusion 360 library gives us access to a variety of predefined print settings that we can apply and modify for our parts. The editor allows us to get full control over our print setting. A variety of parameters are available. We can easily modify and adapt every single value to optimize our print, starting with basic parameters such as the layer thickness and even more advanced settings such as infills, rafts or supports. Infill related settings can also be accessed from the main menu, which allow you to quickly change important parameters such as the infill pattern or the density. Support settings are also available in the main menu, which give you access to the critical support angle or the extruder assignment. Our setup can be reviewed using a toolpath simulation, hence a toolpath has to be created first which is what we're seeing right here. As soon as the system is ready, we can see how the part and all of its support geometries are printed layer by layer. The color code and the control panel on the bottom area of the screen provide further understanding about the simulation and by that of the entire print. Here we can, for example, see how the infill of the part is created using a honeycomb structure. The last step in our workflow is post-processing our toolpath and exporting it into the G-code format. As we have selected our Ultimaker in the first step of the setup, the correct post-processor has been selected already. This means for us that we only have to provide a name for the project and select the output folder. In the second step, we would like to print this part now several times on the platform. In order to do this, we are introducing the concept of manufacturing models. A manufacturing model gives us the ability to adjust, modify and optimize a part within a manufacturing environment, such as our additive setup. The important aspect is here that our initial part in the design workspace is not going to be affected by our changes as these are only relevant for our manufacturing process. A manufacturing model can be created with just a few clicks as we see here. For the next part we have to create a new setup as well. This follows the same procedure that we've seen earlier on. After selecting the manufacturing type, the printer and our manufacturing model as the part we can create a new setup that places our part in the center of the build platform once again.
we would now like to place the part vertically and multiply it so that we can print several of these in one job. This can be achieved by entering the edit mode for the manufacturing model. We do get access to familiar features and functions to impact our part. Let's use, for example, the move and copy function to rotate the part up. With the reduced X and Y area, we can now place more parts in our printer and be more effective. Unfortunately, this might lead to a higher amount of support structures that are required to print the part in its entirety. Considering the building direction, here from bottom to top, supports would be added to the round holes on either sides of the part as well. We can now use the manufacturing model to change the geometry of the holes so that they become self-supporting and don't require any additional support. Again, this is not impacting the initial design of the part and is only effective in this current manufacturing context. We are now creating a rectangular geometry around the holes. As the angled surfaces are below the critical support angles in our print settings, these areas won't necessarily need any further support geometries in the print. We are applying this procedure for all other holes as well, which finishes our design optimization for the additive manufacturing process. We are now using the pattern function to multiply the part. After defining how many copies we would like to get, we can define the placement via drag and drop and determine the position of all individual copies. With the newly created optimized copies of our initial part design, we can leave the edit mode and return back to the manufacturing workspace. As the new copies of the part are considered as independent bodies, our setup has to include these as well. Otherwise, they will be ignored in the toolpath calculation. The procedure for the toolpath calculation and the following simulation is analog to our first case earlier on. We can now see how all five parts are included in our toolpath. Obviously, there is more support required per part as in the earlier setup. However, due to our optimization, we were able to build the holes without the use of any further support, which is going to save us time and material. The last step the export of the G-code follows the same principle as described in the first process, but will now include all five parts as well.